All right, so now we're going to try another example, a little bit more complicated. But one of the things that has come up many times in the IB is we have to know by memory the product of the roots equals this, the last term over the first term, and the sum of the roots equal the second coefficient divided by the first coefficient. But this middle one is for cubes specially, and you might not, you don't have to know by memory, you might have to derive it or show it, or it might come up about, but it's handy to have seen it before so we can use it. And so we're going to use these two problems to deal with this scenario here. And we're told that we want to find k so that the zeros of this particular equation forms an arithmetic progression. So if I have my first term, and if I add d to it, that's my second term, and here was my first term, I could go a plus 2d, that's the next term, or I could go a minus d. And typically I've found that when I choose three consecutive terms in this order, my computations tend to get a little bit easier. And so let's use these particular terms in this situation to help us out. So I know the sum of these, so if I go, so here are my roots, my zeros, a minus d plus a plus a plus d has to be minus b, so that's minus a negative 6 over 1. Simplifying this, I get 3a equal to 6, and so a is equal to 2. That's convenient. I'm looking for k, though. K is going to come up in this scenario here now, because K represents the C value. I know that if I take P, Q, Q, R, if I add each combination, so A times A minus D plus A times A plus D plus A minus D times A plus D, that is going to equal to K. That's the one I'm, and let's simplify that. So here's the one that I really need to figure out, work with. What I get is I get a squared minus ad plus a squared plus ad plus a squared minus d squared is equal to k. If I collect like terms, I get 3a squared those cancel, minus d squared is equal to k. And so I already know what a is, I just need to find d now. And I have one last scenario here, to, I have to multiply all these terms, and that's going to equal to negative 10. And so if I multiply a times a minus d times a plus d, that's going to be negative 10 because it's opposite the sign of 10. If I multiply this out, I get a, a squared minus d squared equals to minus 10. And I can say that I know that a is 2, so 2 times 4 minus d squared is equal to minus 10. And so 4 minus d squared is equal to minus 5. Subtract the 4, minus d squared is equal to minus 9, d squared is equal to 9, and so d is equal to plus or minus 3. And the plus or minus 3 comes from the fact that it's just going to be this one. I just have to take one of the d's, and it will just work itself out. This is all I switch those terms. So, now I know that, oh, I can say d squared is 9, so I have 3 a is 2 squared minus 9 is equal to k, and so I get 3 times 4 minus 9, 12 minus 9 is equal to k, and so k is indeed 3. And so using these rules of sum and product ideas of polynomials, we can find various coefficients of an equation